Welcome to eBuilder University's on-demand video training. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager. Now let's jump into setting up budget approvals training. Good day, eBuilder users. This is Martin Astazarian, Certified eBuilder Trainer. And in today's short video, we're going to gain an understanding of what it takes to create and approve a budget in the cost module within your eBuilder account. So with that, let us begin. The first thing you're going to want to navigate to here is the cost module. So I'm going to click on the cost tab here at the top of the page. And just like all tabs at the top of the page, when you click a tab or a module at the top of the page here, a global tab, as I like to call it, you have to select the project that you want to see the information for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the project here that I've created called the Performing Art Center. Upon approaching this page, what you're going to find is that we are in the cost summary page for the Performing Arts Center. However, there is no cost summary. And the reason why is because in order to get a cost summary for your project, you must first approve a budget. Again, let me make it clear. If you draft a budget or anything prior to approval, you will always see this screen when you go to the cost summary for that project. So until the project is actually approved, or the budget is approved rather, is when you'll actually see the cost summary table for the project. So with that, let's begin. I'm going to click here. And this is going to take me to the budget details for my Performing Arts Center project. Now, there are two ways in which you can build the work breakdown structure for your project. The first way is, is to manually build line by line all the codes or activities that you're going to be budgeting for on this specific project. The more popular choice, which is the second choice, is the application of a template. Now, the reason templates are so popular, specifically amongst our user base, is because templates will contain all of the basic work breakdown structure items that almost every project in the program is going to have. Now, the template is something that's actually designed and created during the implementation process, but a template can also be created by your eBuilder administrator. And what the template is designed to do is to quickly get you on your way to getting a budget structure assembled and getting it ready for approval. So with that, I'm going to take the latter approach, which is applying a template. And by clicking here, I can apply a budget template. Now, upon clicking that apply template button, this screen is going to give me the option of choosing what template I would like. I'm going to choose the one here labeled small template. Once selected, the template will display all of the line items that are going to be contained within this template structure. And again, let me remind you, a template is a shortcut. It is a quick way of getting information on the screen without having to manually build it line by line. So the alternative to what you're seeing here is that I would have to build each one of these lines separately with cost information for my budget. By applying the template, all of these lines will be applied to my project. By clicking continue, you will see that we're on our way to doing that. Now, let's talk about the concept of this template. The template, again, is a shortcut. And you may ask yourself, Martin, why do you keep saying that? Again, using a template is to get the information that I need as quickly as possible onto the screen. So again, a template is not exactly what your budget structure has to be. You don't necessarily have to commit to what's in the template. You can, in essence, add more line items to this template, or you can delete line items. Let me show you an example. So if let's say property purchase is not going to be taking into consideration for the Performing Arts Center project that I have, I can simply just click on this box here, click delete, eBuilder form, it's always going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? And upon deleting, now I have a budget structure with simply four line items. Again, we are in a draft state according to the status here on the upper right of the screen. Now, because I am drafting my budget, I can make adjustments to this budget without taking any formal transactions to actually change the details of my budget, such as a budget change, which we'll get into in another video. But in this video, all I'm going to do is establish these lines as the budget for my project. Now, I have my structure. I have my activities. What's next? Next is the money. Notice my original budget column here has nothing in it which means that I have to basically decide how much money I'm going to have in each one of these line items. Now a disclaimer, and again, I'm only saying this based on examples that I've seen out with many clients. Some clients will go ahead and approve a budget with zero dollars. What does that mean? 
sometimes for specific organizations that we work with, sometimes budgets are built over time. In other words, you're not too sure about what the numbers are going to be, but you want to approve the budget so that you can establish a cost summary. You can actually formalize the structure. And as you build your budget over time, you're going to be doing it based on formal budget change transactions, which again, we will cover in another video. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the traditional approach. We're going to establish numbers for each one of these activities. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click edit here on the upper right hand side of the screen. And it's going to open up the table below to allow me to actually add original budget amounts to each one of these activities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make things very simple. I'm just going to add very basic amounts to each one of these items. Notice my last item is owner contingency. And what I currently have within this template is what we call a formula. Now what this formula is designed to do, very similar to an Excel sheet, what this formula is designed to do is, it's designed so that if I have a formula enabled on this line right here, it's going to allow me to calculate the value of it based on that formula. And the formula that I've created within the template simply means that I'm taking anything that's in line item 2050, multiplying it by 0 0.20, which means that the amount that's going to be reflected in this specific budget is going to be 20% of this line item right here. So if I go to general construction, right now we have $4,000. I'm going to click recalculate all, and you will notice that automatically my contingency is $800, which represents 20%. Something in addition that I want to show you is this allow charges column. So notice that contingency does not have this selected, which means that when I start committing money or signing purchase orders and assigning it to the different line items of my budget structure, I will not be allowed to directly encumber money from my contingency. The only possible way that that contingency can be utilized is if I move it through formal budget change transactions from the contingency line into any one of these three lines that allows charges. So I want to make sure you guys see that small little detail because this will make a huge difference in how you manage your budget. So once all the numbers are in, I'm going to click save. And this is where we have to have a permission discussion. Because I'm a trainer and I work at eBuilder, I have eBuilder administrative rights within this account. Okay, that's what I've assigned myself so that I can have more options on the screen. But if you are not an eBuilder administrator and you are simply a person who is in charge of proposing a budget or drafting a budget, as I like to say, then in essence, there's going to be some differences on this screen for you. The first very obvious difference is, is that you're not going to have an approve button. And the reason why is because you have not, in essence, been permissioned to approve a budget. All you have been permissioned is, is to draft a budget. So when you click request approval, it will actually go to a person who's assigned within your organization that can approve that budget. Okay, I just want to make things clear. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to approve this budget so that we can see the screen that pops up as a result of doing so. Upon approving, we're going to get this confirm approval screen. Now, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware as you watch these videos and other training videos in the cost module. This approval screen will be on every single transaction that you approve in eBuilder within the cost module. It will always ask you the same exact thing. It will ask you for the approval date which the best option for you to fill this out is just simply to click the link here if it's today's date that the approval is taking place, which most, most of the time it is. And it also gives you the ability to add additional commentary as more information as it relates to this budget. So what's an example of commentary? Well, let's say that in your budget, even though you use the template, you charge a little bit more, you budget a little bit more than normal on a specific line item. This is where you can indicate why. Maybe the project in question has a special circumstance that you want to point out. And during the approval, you want to make sure that you make it clear and you create an audit trail around that special circumstance. So that would be an option there to write a note about. Once those two items are filled, and again, the only requirement you have is this field right here, you can go ahead and click Yes, Approve the Budget. Now, you will notice a couple of things. One, your budget has been approved, which means the status here will indicate that it's approved. Two, 
Now you are ready to actually fill out commitments. You're ready to actually put purchase orders against your budget. And finally, if you click into the cost summary of the project, you will now have a cost summary showing all your columns for the project. With that, I conclude this video on how to set up and approve a budget. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager.